Hi, it's Dwyer. It's February 16th, 2024. Wealthspinning.blogspot.com, a free site. Also, always, 1776.com, a free site. Nothing I say in this video should be construed as financial advice. I want everyone watching this video to do their own due diligence. The opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, right now, we're hearing a lot of pundits talk about a soft landing, right? I'm not buying it. Understand the stock market is hopelessly overvalued right now. What you have to be asking yourself is what's going to drop, right? Let's go one step further. If you live through the 1970s, like I did, look at this gray. You understand that you can have rising unemployment while at the same time having rising inflation, right? Understand, stagflation we know can happen because it happened for years during the 1970s. I believe inflation is going to come back with a vengeance because I believe politicians are going to panic when unemployment starts to rise. So let's talk about some metrics right now to give you an overview on the economy, right? Um, to sort through all the noise that you're hearing. The Buffett indicator is the total market cap of stocks divided by the GDP. In an ideal world, understand, stocks are fully valued if that ratio equals 100%. Right? The market cap should roughly equate to the economic output of the country. Anything north of 100% and you have an overvalued stock market. Folks, the Buffett indicator right now is at 181.5%. Folks, you, you have a stock market that's on steroids right now. And understand, you don't have the economy to support it. Now, some might say, okay, the Buffett indicator, that's just one indicator. <laughs> Clearly, others must show that we're headed for a soft landing, right? We're coming out of a bull market and things aren't that bad. So let's take a look at the Schiller price earnings ratio, right? Just understand another name for this is the cyclically adjusted price to earnings cap ratio. Truth be told, this is a little bit better than the Buffett indicator in terms of optimism for the economy. But even this ratio, which is smoothed out over time, right? It's, you know, they measure it over a 10 year period of time. So you're not too beholden to the moment. Even this ratio shows that the stock market is 34.4% overvalued. Folks, we're in an era of chat GPT. We're in an era of Google search, Bing search, right? All I'm asking you to do is to look up these numbers yourself. Just recognize that the Buffett indicator and the Schiller P-E ratio show that the stock market is hopelessly overrated, right? It's incredible that I can be here with a straight face talking about how the Schiller P.E. ratio is 30.5% higher than the recent 20-year average of 26.3. Right? Think about that. 30.5% higher than the recent 20-year average. Let's also talk about the yield curve. Folks, it's inverted. I have bad news for you. It's when the yield curve starts to uninvert that we end up with a recession, that things start to get back to normal. Well, right now, the one month 
is going off at a 5.39% interest rate. The 30-year is going off at a 4.45% interest rate. The yield curve is still inverted. We're not even economically healthy enough to have an uninverting yield curve. Now, you know here in the past I've been skeptical about the electric vehicle market. Right? The hype just got away from all of us. Right? I'm on the road in my gas-powered vehicle and I'm looking around and I'm thinking, wow, if my car starts to run low on energy and if I were driving an EV, where would I charge up? And folks, the options aren't there. And understand, you know, I have an office in Mountain View, California, where Google's located. I mean, I'm in tech-savvy Silicon Valley. And to me, the infrastructure is just not here for a lot of EVs, right? My daughter used to go to school in Cupertino. I would show up there to drop her off, and uh, the parking lot was flooded with EVs. Right? Cupertino used to be where Apple's located. They've changed their location now. But understand, I drive around Cupertino often enough, and I don't see a lot of EV charging stations. Well, the Wall Street Journal two days ago had an article entitled The Six Months That Short-Circuited the Electric Vehicle Revolution. It's written by a Mike Coleus. I would encourage people to read it. The article is now on YouTube, so you don't even have to be a journal subscriber to read this article. Right now, let me just make a few points here. Folks, um, I have no doubt. I've ridden in EVs. I have no doubt that EVs offer things that regular cars don't offer. I was startled. When I was in an EV and I couldn't hear the engine, right? It was startling. The display is new and it shows you the cars around you, right? You know, certain things work on an EV. Of course, Elon Musk has Tesla moving toward autonomous vehicles. I'm not saying the technology isn't dazzling. Right? The real question here is whether we're ready for the technology and whether it's cost effective. Right? I can go to a World's Fair and see dazzling technology. That dazzling technology might still take years to reach critical mass in the economy. So let's talk about just some things happening with EVs. As you know, last January, just a little over a year ago, Tesla cut prices on EVs, right? Understand, Ford today is losing money in its EV division, right? Understand, used EVs, Tesla Model 3, the Model Y, they're dropping in price at used EV dealers. Understand, too, the value proposition is changing. We now have other demands on electricity, don't we? What does AI run on? Isn't that electricity? What does cryptocurrency mine on? Isn't that electricity? Right, folks, the cost equation, right? When you buy an EV, you're saying, well, how much will it cost me? I would argue that given the competing uses and their high-end uses, Right? Artificial intelligence uses a lot of electricity, folks. Right? You see the demand for Bitcoin, and I can't discuss crypto too much here because I have a Substack page, dewire70905.substack.com, where I have paid customers where we get in depth on crypto. But understand, the money flowing in is spot Bitcoin ETFs, and the people administering them are high level, right? BlackRock, Fidelity. Right, just understand, 
those ETFs, some of them are already some of the best financed ETFs in the ETF universe in the United States. And spot Bitcoin ETFs just got approved last month. Right? So electric vehicles now have major competition, major for energy. The grid would need to be completely overhauled, wouldn't it? To serve all of these markets. How much is that going to cost? Also, has anyone figured out that because of fracking and other new technologies, the United States is now a net oil exporter? Think about that. So you're telling me that as the United States now is realizing that versus the rest of the world, it has more oil than it needs, right? Even Joe Biden has started to refill the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, right? You mean as we have an abundance of fossil fuel energy, EVs need an electrical grid update simply to be competitive. Let me also point out, too, that during the hype phase, General Motors planned to upgrade a plant. They were going to spend $4 billion. Think about that bonanza for that local economy. They were going to spend $4 billion to upgrade a plant so that the plant could create more electric vehicles. They've delayed that a year. You should be troubled by that. You know Hertz had a lot of EVs that it was going to rent to consumers, and consumers were hesitant, right? They're driving gas-powered cars in the rest of their life, right? That's what has possession of the market. On a vacation, the idea of renting an EV was just too much for them to process, because they know how to fill up at a gas station. They know how to spot a gas station. Right? You're driving down the road. You say, there's the Shell station. I know I can fill up my car there. Right? With EVs, there's going to be a learning curve for most of us. Do a Google search on Hertz selling a lot of EVs that it had been renting. Right now, let's make an analogy, and it might be fair, it might be unfair. But the hype on the EV market from two years ago looks a lot like the hype right now on artificial intelligence, doesn't it? Right, folks? I'm a fan of super microcomputer. Uh, what's the RSI on that? 99? Folks, it's off the page. NVIDIA is really priced for perfection, isn't it? Right? Haven't we gotten just a tad ahead of ourselves? Isn't the feeling the same feeling you had in the EV market where you thought, oh, in a couple of years, all the cars on the road are going to be EV? You had governors like my governor, Gavin Newsom. Say, hey, you know, I'm going to outlaw the sale of internal combustion engine cars. Let's set a deadline by which those cars can no longer be sold. Now, keep in mind the poor timing of it, right? California recently, just a few years ago, had brownouts. Couldn't handle the electrical load, right? That's with much of the state still using internal combustion engine cars. Right? You might have heard about PG&E's problems. Right? We jumped the gun. People were so certain that EVs were going to take over that they're now outlawing the sale. It's, a, it's in a future date. They're outlawing the sale, the future sale, of internal combustion engine cars. Now think about how premature that is. Since the U.S. now is exporting energy, thanks to fracking, the Permian Basin, right? Now that we're exporting energy, you would think someone would say, hey, don't working class people need a break? 
given the uncertainty of what's going on with the electrical grid, whether we'll be able to handle all of these new competing uses, right? Electric vehicles are relatively new in terms of mass use, right? We understand that they go back to the Henry Ford days, but they're new in terms of current adoption rate. Cryptocurrencies are new. Bitcoin's what, 15 years old? A lot of the digital asset universe are digital assets other than Bitcoin, right? Ethereum is used more than Bitcoin, quite frankly. Right? Artificial intelligence, folks, that's brand new. When did open AI drop? I understand there are people out there talking about how they were involved in artificial intelligence in the 1980s. Okay, fine. But it's new for mass adoption, right? OpenAI, ChatGPT, that's all new. Right, folks, we don't know where the demand for electricity is going to go. And into that uncertain world, Governments jumped the gun, not just in the United States, not just in the state of California, but in Europe. They jumped the gun, didn't they? Bought into this alternative energy hype, right? And you know the rest. Some of these laws are going to have to be rolled back. If GM, a supplier is delaying upgrading a $4 billion improvement on a plant, right? If Volkswagen, if Ford are now treading lightly in the space, if free market suppliers have some hesitancy, people like Gavin Newsom are going to have to have some hesitancy before they outlaw internal combustion engine cars at a time when the United States is exporting energy. Right, let's talk about more hype. Now, I don't mean to pick on this company. I admire the company. I've had more than one client who worked for Apple. Right? Um, I think Apple is a tremendous company. Steve Jobs is one of my all-time favorite entrepreneurs. Right? I love the resiliency of him. Right, He's with Apple. He leaves. Uh, he's with Next. He you know, comes back to Apple. Great guy. But recognize when the hype has gotten away from the facts. Now, the Apple Vision Pro dropped. Right, I have no doubt that the technology is impressive. Right? The question, though, is are we ready for it? Not just the technology, but the price of the technology. We understand that the Apple Vision Pro costs a lot more than Meta's commensurate product. Right, And keep in mind, Meta is one of the magnificent seven. It's a very well-funded business. There's an infrastructure behind Meta where you would imagine buying a Meta product, you're going to get servicing. Uh, they have their finger on the pulse of technology like Apple does. Understand, you're paying a huge premium for Apple's product. So, one of the selling points for Apple's Vision Pro was that it was supposed to be a more user-friendly experience than a Meta headset, which apparently left a lot of people dizzy. Right? These headsets, your brain's not wired to suddenly see interfaces and things like that. Right? Mixed reality. It might throw you off. Well, just understand, you now have stories online of people returning Apple Vision Pros. Right, they're complaining of things like dizziness. Now, maybe this is some outlier group. Right, maybe this group is at the margins, right? 1%, 2%. Understand, the Apple Vision Pro just dropped. 
So this news is new, right? A lot of people are commenting on the price and they're saying, hey, look, you know, I enjoyed the product, just not enough to pay more than $3,000 for it. I had a 14-day window to get my $3,000 plus back. I decided to use that. We understand that. Well, now we're finding out that Warren Buffett has sold some of his Apple shares. Now, Apple has a lot in the pipeline, right? Um, AI, um, the rumor is they're going to drop a car. I imagine the car is going to be innovative, right? I have no doubt. But understand the way these things work, right? EVs were supposed to be the next best thing to slice bread. Right now, it's AI, right? Apple drops, you know, it's Vision Pro. And then consumers start to, over time, right, lose some of that early adopter enthusiasm, right? Consumers start to say, hey, you know, was this really worth the price? What would I have spent the $3,000 plus on? Right? As I've mentioned to people on EVs, a lot of folks don't realize that when the battery goes, you have to pay thousands of dollars for a new battery. So in the EV used car market, right? I could get that Tesla. It looks spectacular. It's used. I've gotten it at a good price, especially now since prices are dropping. Then, of course, the car dies. I hear, hey, there isn't much we can do. Your battery has run its course. I say, okay, how much is the new battery? Thinking I'm going to pay a couple hundred dollars because I'm a vet of internal combustion engine car batteries. And they say, no, player, $5,000. Right? You thought the Apple Vision Pro cost a lot of money. Here, my used car battery is going to run me 5000 or more. Right, So as the information comes out, the enthusiasm is being dampened a little bit. I love AI. I have no doubt that AI uh, is going to be a big part of the future. Right, No doubt whatsoever. But at the same time, I look at these AI stocks and I just think to myself, wow, you know, sure, NVIDIA is on fire. How long is it going to be this hot? Right? Isn't that the question? Are we going to reach a point where people are going to start to think to themselves, hey, you know, some of the information I got in my AI search wasn't 100% accurate. Uh, I'm going to have to actually proofread, you know, the search results that I'm getting, right? There are going to be legal questions to uh, understand these images right now that you generate using these large language models um, can't be copywritten. Right. Someone's going to say, hey, you know, I told my graphic designer to get lost. Maybe I need to call him or her back because I need a design that I can actually copyright because I'm selling a product and I want to use this symbol as my symbol. Right. As that enthusiasm dampens a little bit. Some stock prices might drop, just or at least not increase uh, the way they're currently priced. Just food for thought. Let me close by just saying that um, the employment market is going to have some fallout. You see that DoorDash recently announced earnings that disappointed. Right. I'm, you know, right now, the feeling is, hey, we have unemployment of less than 4%. That's if you believe government numbers. I don't. 
right? Understand out here, uh, people are shocked that companies like Google are having periodic layoffs. Right before the company was apologetic. They said, hey, we just have to do this and stuff like that. Now people have wisened up. And they're saying, gee, how can we have the great earnings reports that we've been having while people are getting laid off? You heard me mention Meta earlier, right? Meta laid off a lot of people and then had a great earnings report. The stock's up. Now I understand all of these companies are really in the business of making money. Right, but now workers are feeling like they're widgets. They're feeling like they're disposable. Right, I have spoken to some. Right, I have some clients who work for Google. Folks, they're shaken. I don't know how else to put it. They're shaken. They've been with Google for some time and they just don't know where or when the next axe is gonna fall. I'm just telling you, look through the economy right now. Figure out how much of the stock indexes have been impacted to the upside by the Magnificent Seven. Right, understand if earnings start to dampen with the Magnificent Seven, right, if, um, you know, you stop losing the pop in the stock price that you're getting from layoff announcements, right? If the Magnificent Seven revert to the historical mean, what will that mean for stock market indexes at a time when the Buffett indicator is over 181%, right? At a time when the Schiller P.E. ratio is far above its 20-year average, right? So if you get one takeaway from this video, it's that we're headed for hard times, right? I'm not a politician. I'm not running for office. I'm not here trying to convince people that inflation's never going to return. We're going to have a soft landing no one is going to lose their jobs when you see people all over the economy losing their jobs. When you realize when you're at the supermarket and you're looking at the price of eggs and the price of milk, and then you're reading the fine print on the government's, you know, inflation report, that they're excluding food, right? That they, that they are cutting up the numbers to exclude things like food and shelter, What's more important to you and your family? Right? Use your own two eyes. I'll agree. Energy has dropped in price. I'll agree with that a lot. Right? But don't be fooled by the public narrative about dropping inflation. And I'll agree. The, um, you know, gold is down. Silver is down. Right? Folks... I believe you need to be in gold and silver, right? Whatever's going on in the economy, folks, it's unhealthy. The future, the immediate future at least, does not look bright. Sure, there are some bright lights out there. Bitcoin's on fire, right? I'll be the first to admit it, right? It's over $50,000 a coin. Okay, great, Ethereum's on fire. Fine, we're headed to the Bitcoin halving. Okay, that's great news for that corner. That corner of the economy. Not for most of the economy. So, I'm expecting more layoffs. Folks, look at the layoffs with the Magnificent Seven. Study DoorDash's latest earnings report. Ask yourself, if the company is down like that, how vibrant is this gig economy? Let me point out that some of these fast food places 
have value menus, right? You know, just the next time you order a value menu item, take it apart and look at how much meat you're actually receiving. Folks, the food is cheap because they've disintermediated much of the beef that they used to give you. Look at beef prices right now. Right, they have not solved inflation when it comes to food. Right, given the fact that in the 70s we had high unemployment and high inflation, what should lead us to believe that we're not on the verge of having both now? Right, as people get laid off, they're going to pressure their politicians to control costs. Right? One way politicians have historically done so is by printing money. I need to have people look at Japan right now. Right? Japan is in recession right now. Look at all the money they printed over the years. Folks, that hasn't prevented Japan from having recession after recession. Right? Look at Europe right now. Right? Look at countries like Germany right now. We're a far way from when Germany was viewed with envy as being the economic engine of Europe. Right, folks? The inflation rate in the UK right now is something like 4%. Now, are we to believe that just because there's an ocean between us, that we're immune from getting back to 4% inflation? Those are my thoughts today. You see the background here reads high risk. I want everyone to think for themselves. But right now, just like the enthusiasm in the EV market got a little ahead of itself, right now the enthusiasm in the AI market has gotten a little bit ahead of itself. Right? Let me also point out that, you know, Apple's Vision Pro, if it was a home run, runaway success that was going to change the future, I don't think Warren Buffett, one of the world's savviest investors, would be selling Apple shares. Do you think so? Right? Also, the minute someone tells you the yield curve's inverted and the Buffett indicator is above 180%, you should already know the economy is in trouble. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. Um, if you disagree or agree with me, tell us about it in the comment section of this YouTube video. You know, Jim Cramer always says there's a bull market out there somewhere. Right, folks, there's also a bear market out there somewhere. Right, you know that just looking at the price of your groceries. You know that when the president starts talking about shrinkflation. Incredibly, incredibly, with a $34 trillion debt. The president of the United States wanted to blame shrinkflation on suppliers. Think about how preposterous that is. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.